Hello everybody, a warm welcome from me and from the troublesome influenza. Now what you're probably all asking yourselves is, is that idiot still wearing pyjama pants? And the answer to that is, yes I am. I'm going to be wearing PJs to the start of every influenza video because I think they bring me luck and God knows I really need it with this car. First of all this week, a little bit of car news. So I leaded last week to the Peugeot 205 GTI um, that I bought before the lockdown but I hadn't been able to get delivered. Well. I'm going to be able to at least show you some pictures, hopefully some video this week, and just tell you a little bit about that car. Now, for our American friends that don't know about these, these little hot hatches are absolutely legendary in Europe. They were pretty much the best handling, best little hot hatch that you could get at the time. Huge 1.9 litre engine by European standards in a little crisp packet that weighed about 900 kilos. I think that's, in American money, that's 1,800 pounds. Forget the Golf GTI, yes that was a more rounded car, yes that started it all, but if you're talking about pure thrills and pure handling, the Peugeot 205 is the car to get. It came out in the late 80s I think and ran for a few years. My car is actually a 1991, it's got 130,000 miles on the clock so it's quite leggy but the engine was rebuilt two years ago by a couple of Peugeot enthusiasts so my aim for this is to be like a very usable everyday car and it's there to replace the M135i that I had before. Modern cars are not fun, you have to drive them so fast to get any pleasure out of them. Just everyday driving is as dull as anything, so I wanted something a bit more interesting and I decided to get an ultra reliable 1990s French hot hatch as my daily driver. So I can't wait to get hold of it. If you can think of a, uh, a funny name for the, for the Peugeot, uh, please let me know. Another bit of really exciting news is that one of my friends, Fergus, actually did pretty much exactly what I did and bought a Ferrari unseen during lockdown. Now he wasn't as much of an idiot as I was, he didn't buy it in the space of an hour at auction, he did do some research but he never actually saw the car until it was delivered. It is a stunning 456 GT in silver with black interior. The car has 50,000 miles on it and he paid just £37,500 for it. Now, if you just go back a year or two, what that would get you was a really tatty, maybe, auto car. This is a manual. I absolutely love it. I think they look amazing. Now, some people think that they're terrible and some people adore them. I'm in the latter category. I think it's one of Ferrari's prettiest cars. Um, one of the things he is going to do, he thinks the wheels are too small. I do agree. I like the design, but they are a bit too small. So he has apparently got some Ferrari 360 wheels for it. On the whole, it's a good car. I think there's only minor details and things that need to be done to it. Um, so the, the leather on the dash needs a bit of work. The driver's door doesn't open from the inside. But all the main stuff is really good and certainly it's, it's less troublesome than this. Then again, it's a really modern car. So if you're going to work on it, well, it wouldn't be as simple as the old Influenzo either. But now, back to this. Well. Last week I managed to get it to run on all eight cylinders and it has made a massive difference to the drivability and the fun of the Influenzo. It's really coming into its own, but I still don't feel that it's actually revving out and driving the way I think it should do. So I think the next step is a good session balancing the carbs. So we're going to pop into the car now, drive back to the garage where I'm going to tell you another couple of things and then we'll try and get the carbs balanced as well. So one of the things that I've got to sort out on the Influenzo is the sound. You may have noticed it doesn't really sound very Ferrari-like. And this is a very rare single exhaust car. And I found an article from Car Magazine back in 1975 where they did a test on the very first uh, 308. And that too was a single exhaust car. And in that as well, they remarked on the fact that it didn't really sound very Ferrari-like, not as much as it should do. So I'm pretty sure that the issue is to do with my exhaust. It's just too, there's too much in it. I need either a, a four exit standard exhaust or even ideally a sports exhaust. So if any of you have any leads on a cheap exhaust that would fit this car, because the other thing is being a single exhaust with that rear bumper, I don't really want to have to change the bumper. What options do I actually have? So if any of you have any hints or any tips, um, please let me know. I'd really appreciate that. And now let's get on with getting this engine running as well as it can and a good carb balance.
well that was hairy and really unexpected and only 10 seconds before it blew I had my head right there so it's so lucky that 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 didn't happen while I was hanging about doing the carbs what I think happened is that it was sort of idling you know in the in the guide it says it should idle about 1500 revs I think it's probably a bit too high in any case it kept on getting higher than that and I just don't think the fans could cope I'm not even sure if they came in or not so I'm gonna have to have a look at that super fingers crossed that it hasn't damaged anything but the head gaskets on these um, I've been told are really good even if you overheat them so I'm going to try and start it up I refilled it and I really hope that I haven't done any long-term damage so we'll see hello everyone well it's another day now and uh, I've got a few things to do today after yesterday's debacle where the influenza basically tried to burn my face off I'm gonna to have to have a look at the fans I suspect that they're not coming on and that's why it boiled over. Um, I did start the car up yesterday evening and it did start, it did run, so fingers crossed that it hasn't done any lasting damage but I think we'll only know once I actually take it out for a drive again and that's going to be in a few days. Um, but for today's testing anyway, start it up, see what's going on with the fans, try and make sure that they do come on uh, and then hopefully back to the carbs and uh, balancing them and um, trying to sort that side of things out. <laughs> it's never a dull day with the influenza. Well I hesitate to say it but it's been, uh, I'd say it's been a successful morning in the influenza. It hasn't blown up. So it looked like the contacts on the switch at the bottom of the radiator, they were pretty dirty. So the fans are now coming on uh, and that's great and it seems to be keeping to temperature but having said that I'm going to flush the whole cooling system as well. Apart from that, what I'm really happy about is that it looks like, looks like I've managed to balance the carbs as closely as possible. Side to side they are really good and front to back they are now pretty good as well and front to back was the really tricky one to do. So wait a couple of days, take it out, see if I haven't broken the engine with that um, when it boiled over uh, and see if it drives better after all this work or if it was all completely for nothing. Hello again everybody and uh, let me tell you that although I put on a brave face when it actually happened I was absolutely devastated that the influenza boiled over. I really was, I thought my god what you know that's it that's a definite engine rebuild. I've since run the car quite a few times in the garage stationary and it's been absolutely fine I've checked the water and these head gaskets are pretty tough and it looks like it has survived but we won't know for sure until we take it for a proper spin and we'll also then see if the work that I did on balancing the carbs has actually borne any fruit. Let's see if the influenza is okay. The super influenza. Well, if anything, I think it's running better than before. A genius I was boiling it over seems to be going better than ever what a car and no other car have I had that has just brought me through quite the range of emotions that this has just seems that every year every week at least once or twice it goes from absolute delight to total despair all within like a day or two and at the moment I'm really happy again but there is one thing that we need to talk about which has been in the back of my mind since the beginning but I haven't really addressed it because I've had more pressing things to think about. I have noticed that the influenza seems to make a whistling noise between, depending on what gear you're in, between four and six and a half thousand revs and it only seems to do it at maximum throttle so if I slowly just go up to four or five thousand at constant speed it will go up no problem if I just boot it from I'm going to show you now from um, about four thousand it makes a strange whistling noise see if you can hear it so we're in second gear three thousand revs foot down there it is hear it and again I recorded it on my phone earlier and I think that's the best way to, to hear it. Now 
I've tried to disconnect the airbox, uh, run with the airbox open, it still does it. So it's not an intake related sound. And I just, um, it worries me slightly because I think it could be a bearing somewhere. The belts were actually replaced a year and a half ago, including the tensioner bearings. So I don't think there can be any issues with, with those. Um, but having said that, I don't know, it, it's very odd. What, what do you think it is? Have a listen again. So 3000 rev, second gear. It's like a, it's a whistling noise, but it's also like a high pitch rattle. And again, a constant speed. If I go up to those gears, so 4,000, 5,000, no rattle, nothing. It's five and a half. But if I put my foot down, there it is. There's that, that noise. God, the engine is going so much better than before. I hope whatever this is is simple, but do let me know what you think. Thank you all again so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you for the next one. And um, I don't know, my next priority probably has to be trying to get to the bottom of this noise because um, I'm not going to be able to rest now until I know what it could be or how serious it could be. But it is running so much better. Got to be happy with that.